Okay, in a past video, I featured this device here. This is a GNSS receiver. It stands for Global Navigation Satellite System. And what it does, it can receive GPS systems from many countries. So they're under one umbrella, and it's called the GNSS. Now the identifier on the GNSS receiver is GN instead of GP. Now this one has a, a passive antenna. It's external. Now I'm looking for a GPS that's waterproof. I want to use a GPS outdoors. So in this video, I'm going to show you a model that's in its own enclosure and waterproof. Okay, here's another model of a GNSS receiver, which is waterproof. It's in its own enclosure. The temperature range is minus 40 degrees C to plus 85 degrees C. And inside is the antenna and the GNSS receiver. And the antenna has a LNA, a low noise amplifier. So time to fix is very fast. Now it's made by eBite, and the model number is E108-GN03G-TTL. Now TTL means it's compatible with a UART, TTL UART. And the input voltage you could run from 3.3 volts to 5 volts. It has a magnet, you see, so you could stick it on top of your car. Okay, so the cable that's attached to the GNSS receiver has four wires coming out of it. And we start at the very right. The black wire is ground. The red wire is VCC, could be 3.3 volts or 5 volts. The white wire is RX, and the green wire is TX. That's our UART, that's our TTL UART. And I have it soldered to a six pin uh, header, single row header. And remember the sequence, because we're going to plug this into a breadboard. Okay, I plugged my single row pin header into my breadboard. And I got myself an FTDI module that's USB to serial. I have a jumper for 3.3 volts, so it will power the GNSS receiver. Now I soldered the wires onto my pin header in a sequence that will match the pins on the FTDI module. So all I have to do is plug it in for, pin for pin into the breadboard, like this. Now when I plug in my USB connector that's connected to my computer, it will power up the receiver, so we'll plug it in. And you can see the LED, the anemia strings are being sent every one second. So all, all we have to do is run a serial terminal program on our computer and we can monitor the NEMA strings being transmitted by the receiver. Okay, I have a serial terminal program up and running on my computer. It's connected to my FTDI module. So we're monitoring the NEMA strings being sent out by the GNSS receiver every one second. Now you notice it hasn't seen any satellites yet, there's no fix. But what I want to do, I want to show you something. I'll disable the output. And if you look at the very bottom, it checks the antenna every one second. And it says antenna is opened. Now this software was meant for the passive antenna. So if it sees it disconnected, it will show antenna open. But since we have a low noise amplifier, it's not the passive 50 ohms. It thinks the antenna is open, but it's not, obviously, because it works. So that's just something that you'll notice if you're uh, monitoring the NEMA strings that the antenna open is going to be shown even though everything is okay. Okay, to make my setup portable so I can take it outside and check out the operation, I'm going to hook up my GNSS receiver to my flipper. Now my flipper has a battery inside so it could power the GPS receiver. It has a display. It has a GPIO bus on the top. So I resoldered the wires on my pin header to match so I could plug it in. So I got my 3.3 volts, ground, TX and RX, and I can run some software that will give me the latitude, longitude, course, that's my bearing, speed, altitude, how many satellites and my, my time. So I could take this outside now and see how many satellites I could get and check out the operation of the GNSS receiver. Okay, I'm outside at my local playground. And as you can see, I have 15 satellites, and the time to fix was fairly quick. I tested the speed in course. I, I walked fast and ran, and it picked up my speed. It was kind of hard to fill them. So overall, I think this GPS is pretty sensitive. Even inside the house, I'm picking up multiple satellites. Now the UART on the GNSS receiver is full duplex. So you could send configuration data into the receiver. Here's an example where you could change the baud rate. Now the default is 9600, but you could change it to whatever you want just by sending in a certain string. And you can see up there there's an example of the string. So you could send it using real term to change the baud rate of the receiver. 
Okay, here's a screenshot of real term. So you could enter your configuration string into the text box, as you can see there, then hit send ASCII. It'll send that string into the receiver to change the baud rate. Okay, so that was my little review of this GNSS receiver. You could get it online for under $10. It's pretty sensitive. So if you have an application where you need to put a GPS outdoors, check out this GNSS receiver from eBite.